Uh, so you're going to see my screen now, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so once you have uh, your uh, hosted chef account um, created, you need to log in. Uh, let me just start the process for you guys. Yeah, and once you log in, you will come to this screen, right, where you have your uh, uh, nodes listed and all those things. Probably it will be blank for you for the first time as well because you don't have any uh, nodes listed over here. So what you need to do is uh, you need to cover, come over here, administration. You need to select your uh, organization and you need to click on the start report. Okay. Once you come over here, you have an option to download the starter kit. You click over here. It will come this message, and you can you just need to click on proceed. It will download a zip file for you. Uh, just give me a moment, please. Yeah, hello, sorry for that. So uh, you have download, uh, you just click on that and it will download the starter kit for you. Just like, uh, if I need to show you. Mm. I should have that over here. Yeah, here it is. So it will be a zip file like this. And uh, if you click on this one, you will have a couple of things. Let me just take you through all those uh, details. This is starter kit is the one which you need to have uh, on your workstation. Okay, this you need to copy and paste on your workstation. And as you can see, once you unzip the starter kit, you will have this chef repo folder. Inside the chef repo folder, you have a couple of more folders. We'll just see, look at them. Uh, first of uh, first of them is this uh, dot chef folder. If you go inside dot chef folder, you will find these files. If you see here. This is uh, one of the user files which I have created. This is the user, and this is the basically uh, the PEM file. It contains a key for my uh, user, and that is why you don't need and uh, uh, need a password when you log into the Chef server, right? And uh, the other file is this uh, knife.rb file. And if I open this file, as you can see here, I have a couple of things. Um, if you see the client key. Uh, first of all, the node name I have, which is sk one k by default. I don't need to change anything. Uh, client key location, it will tell me. So this is the current directory sk one k dot pem, uh, which is nothing but this file location, this file task, because this is the one which is used for uh, authentication purpose. All right. And this is the username which you have given when you have uh, registered for the hosted chef account. Okay. Uh, so that is one thing. And... Uh, uh, chef server URL you will get uh, this file, which is uh, the location of this file is uh, over here. This, this tells you that uh, what is the name of your chef server and within the chef server, what is the organization name which you have. So I have given the organization name as uh, Perceptor for myself. Uh, this is the name which I have given for my organization. And uh, this has one more thing this has, has got it's called Facebook underscore path. Which is the default location when we are working with the cookbooks and the recipes? Uh, this is the default location where all the cookbooks will be saved. Okay, so knife.rb file, as you can see, is the one which is required for configuration of uh, all the corporate uh, file for the for the chef server to contact. You know, chef server station will contact with the chef server uh, with the help of this knife.rb file. So, uh, apart from that, if I come up. I have a cookbooks folder. 
And inside the cookbook folder, I have a default uh, starter uh, cookbook. It is just a kind of sample cookbook, which gives you the details what exactly you need inside a cookbook. Okay. Uh, you can use any one basso. You can, uh, uh, whichever is fine with you. But however, what you can do is uh, Sublime is one of them, or uh, Atom, or uh, Notepad++. But make sure you don't use. Uh, just Notepad, the standard one which you come uh, which comes with the with the Windows uh, machine, right? Apart from that, any any professional text uh, text editor is fine with me. Uh, Sublime, Atom, Notepad. I gave you some examples. So you can use anything you like. Uh, Visual Studio Code, VS Code. That is also a good one. Uh, Sublime or Notepad plus plus is I think is the most commonly uh, used um, editor, and these two are absolutely fine. Anyone which you like or which you work on is fine, but don't use Notepad. That's the only condition. All right, so uh, coming back here, so we have a starter kit. We, we need starter. to do. Sorry? Uh, I was trying to ask do we need to configure it in the file? Like it is, I've seen it is commented. So if you are using Sublime, do you need to delete the comment first and save the file before proceeding? Uh, I don't know, the line is straight out. They are fine, uh, Karamo, no problem. See, commented lines, anyways, they don't make a difference at all. Um, so, so that's absolutely fine. And uh, uh, whatever is commented, you can just ignore that. Not a problem. You can keep that. That will not not conflict with any of your codes, right? When you create a new cookbook, uh, it will actually by default have something. If I if I come over here, at the top you will have some couple of things. Over here you have a couple of things. And any new cookbook when you create, uh, you get a couple of more things. Okay, so but need not worry. Uh, all those things uh, uh, you can ignore. No problem. You can have your new files, whatever you create. Right. Uh, yeah. So within the cookbook, uh, we have this starter cookbook which contains a couple of folders. Recipe is the folder which uh, where you have all your recipes stored, and you always have a whenever you create a cookbook, it will always contain a recipe folder. And within the recipes folder, you will always have this default or RB um, uh, recipe. Okay, this always will come like this. Uh, you can actually go ahead and make all the changes over here. You can add anything which you like. Uh, even if you don't do anything, that's not a problem. Uh, but default will be there always, right? That's what I wanted to say. Um, apart from default, you have something called, if you click on starter, come back to the, the main folder. Uh, we have something called metadata.rb file. If I click on this file, Mm, it basically contains your uh, the, the the details about the company and the version and the maintainer. So what you can do is you can write your company name over over here and you can write your email address over here. Uh, there are a couple of important things which uh, this uh, metadata.rb uh, file does. First one is this version. Okay, when we are versioning the cookbooks, so version one dot zero dot zero, version one dot one dot zero, we will be increasing the versions, right? So that is done on this metadata.rb uh, file. That is one thing. Uh, the other thing important uh, thing is when you have your when you are working with uh, multiple cookbooks, uh, we'll see that in detail later. Even if you don't understand now, should not be uh, you, that should not be a problem. We'll cover that again. Say cookbook A is this cookbook is dependent on some other cookbooks. What you will do? Uh, you just write like this, pens, and then you write the cookbook name. Right. So suppose this is the starter cookbook, which is uh, dependent on say Windows cookbook. What's the purpose of it? How do we, uh, what exactly? Then exactly we need that, that we will cover later. But this is just one of the two important tasks which we have to do. Any kind of cookbook dependency is uh, uh, it, it's actually maintained over here. Okay. So we'll uh, close this without saving. And uh, what you do is so this is typically your uh, uh, starter.zip file. What you need to do is what I have.
uh, this is how you run any of the vagrant commands outside the folder, right? Uh, you have all these IDs, which are all vagrant container IDs, I mean box IDs. What you do is any of the, you just copy the box ID as I have done in this one. I want to start the chef workstation. So I copied this ID and I do a vagrant up and then this ID, right? That will uh, bring your machine up. Oh, okay. Is it not audible at all? No, I can hear properly. I can hear, I can hear you now, but before really, it was not ah, okay. what you what you've okay. just done. Sure, sure. Well, just bear with me for a couple of uh, seconds, guys. Let, it, let this come up. I already have uh, one of my workstations configured, so I'll directly show you. Um, while it is coming, just to let you know uh, what exactly you need to do is uh, once you just need to copy this uh, chef starter zip file, paste it to your um, workstation. And uh, before you do this, uh, actually, you need to install the chef PK, which I have uh, shown you yesterday. I'll show that to you once again uh, today. What we need to do is we need to go to chef.downloads, I mean, downloads.chef.io. And over here, we need to go to, let me just show you that once again. For your reference, uh, I, I come over here and uh, scroll down, go to Chef Development Kit, click on Get It. And uh, in my case, I'm using CentOS, so I use this uh, link, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, depending on which operating system you are on, you will select the respective uh, link and uh, then you will download. So I have downloaded, uh, since mine is uh, RHAL 6, I'm in CentOS 6, I come over here and uh, I copy this URL. Okay, and um, after I copy this URL, I actually go ahead and paste it with the, with the help of wget command. Uh, I'll do something like this. Mm. I'll do something like wget and then space. I'm sorry, I've not copied yet. So, I'll copy this and I'll paste over here. Okay, paste. Uh, hit enter. It will um, download this uh, package for me. Once it is done, uh, I'll go to that location and I'll use that hyphen RPM hyphen UVH command to install it that will install uh, the chef workstation and the, all the supporting files for me uh, on, on this machine, right? Once that is done, uh, I will uh, uh, copy the chef starter kit over here or download the chef starter kit and I'll bring it over here. Let's see if it is uh, the machine is up and running. Still uh, coming up. Okay, it's doing something, let it, let it do. Meanwhile, uh, let me open that document for you guys. So this is the document that you need to follow for your workstation configuration. Uh, we already saw that we need to have a chef DK installed. So this is how I do it. Uh, one way of doing it through this command, curl hyphen L, this will also, also install. And configure the other way is to go to this location, download the chef development kit, which I just showed you how to do it. Uh, once that is done, you double with the help of WP command, you actually download the package. Uh, right, once that is done, you just need to run rpm hyphen uvh command to uh, install the package, or hyphen ivh is also fine. Mm. I think uh, by mistake, I have actually put the two commands together. Uh, I'll make that changes, guys, because uh, this, this should be actually two commands too. Uh, till AMD64 is one command and then deb db, db uh, sorry, this one. Oh, okay, it's, it's fine, it's fine. First line is the one command and second line is the second command. So this one is to install. wget is to download the package and rpm hyphen ivh shift dk star is to install that package on the machine. 
uh, once that is done, you go to that download starter kit as I just showed you and uh, download that uh, kit for you on your uh, workstation. Once that is done, you just unzip this uh, chef starter.zip to a specific location where you want to install it, right? You'll see all these uh, files already there. And uh, let me just show you actually if this has come up. It's taking some time. Once it is done, I can show you on a screen what exactly goes on. All right, so as you can see here, you will have uh, two different files. One will be knife.rb, one will be shapeadian.com. These files are uh, inside dot chef directory. And I have showed, shown you this, uh, the content inside the knife.rb file as well, where you have uh, chef server URL, all those things which we just went through. Uh, you can see this documentation. I have already explained to you. Once again, it is mentioned over here. What is the purpose of client key? What is the purpose of uh, chef URL and all those things? Uh, right. Uh, once that is done, cookbook path, client name. And uh, this part shows you if you don't download the chef starter kit, what is the other option you have? okay you can actually do this manually as well you can manually create chef repo and you can manually put the create the knife rb file as well um you can try this also as a practice but uh this again it's an alternate right if you are not able to uh, get the starter kit only then but in a, in any case you need to have the uh, you know user.pem file with you if you don't have user.pem file it, it is not going to work even a manual uh, step you need to have that right uh, so once you have uh, that uh, chef repo uh, downloaded and you know unzipped to a specific location, uh, when you start running uh, the the chef server, you know try to communicate with the chef server. You can try try any of the commands, something like uh, you can do like this command, like knife note list, right? Uh, or knife uh, say cookbook list. Any of these commands, this should work for you. Uh, if they are giving output, fine. If they're not giving output, there might be a possibility that you get an SSL error. Okay. If that is the case, then you just need to run these two commands, knife SSL fetch. Uh, what it will do is, is uh, it will actually uh, uh, copy the certificate from the server automatically, and it will paste it uh, inside one of your folders inside the dot shift directory. Okay. Uh, it will actually paste it within, if you see the location here, home, chef IDM, chef repo dot chef and inside dot chef trusted underscore search and this will be the actual uh, certification file the crt file chef example com this will be typically your server name uh, dot crt oh, wow. will copy. yeah uh, sharik like uh, if it is showing the blank for the night knowledge to what should we do like uh, i'm it no, is, blank is uh, uh, blank is fine uh, unless it is giving you an error but blank it will show if you don't have any node bootstrap have you yeah, yeah. no i didn't do okay so it, it then then it is correct in showing knife node list blank right uh, okay no. actually we have two two uh, commands uh, to check you can use knife node list and yeah. check knife uh, client list okay uh, the difference between these two commands is node will show only the node okay uh, okay that however client uh, list will show you uh, your workstation as well. Suppose we have two workstations configured, it will show those. Uh, okay, it is showing Nani Chef Validator. Yes, so that is actually your workstation which it is showing you. Okay. Okay, so since it is not showing you any error, so and you don't have any uh, nodes boots that it is showing blank, it is absolutely correct. And the client list is showing your workstation listed, so that means your uh, configuration is correct now. Okay. Uh, your workstation is actually talking to your uh, chef server, right? Okay. You do a bootstrapping and then it should be working fine for you. What you do is you just have uh, one of the machines ready, uh, which is talking to the chef server. Just make sure you are Either, okay, workstation. Yeah. No, not the workstation, apart from workstation. I, I asked you guys to have two machines, right? So one you yeah, yeah, yeah. have a workstation, another one you just create. I mean, if you don't have it ready already. Okay, I already have. Hmm. Okay. You can just follow along. So, so this is just to know if you get the SSL error, then this is the command you need to use. Okay. What you do is you just need to use like this. Uh, knife 
SSL fetch, it will copy the certificate file from the server and paste it on your workstation. Once that is done, nine SSL check. If, if you run this command, it will actually uh, you know try to communicate with the shell server and it will give you a confirmation message that everything is working fine and it is able to communicate with the shell server. If it gives you that message, then it is fine. Um, okay, so let me just come up inside the folder. Hmm. So I'm inside my, uh, this is the Chef workstation which I have configured for myself. I have just installed the Chef DK, okay? And uh, I have unzipped the Chef repo, if I show you here. Uh, see, I already have this Chef starter kit. This was a zip file. And uh, I unzipped here directly, right? So I just did uh, uh, unzip and a Chef starter dot zip. So this has given me Chef repo. If I go inside uh, Chef repo folder, I should be able to see my cookbooks environments read me. Uh, and if I do ls hyphen al, this should show me the dot chef folder as well because this is a hidden folder. Uh, if I go inside cd dot chef and do ll, it will show me all these files. So knife.rb sk12k.pem file, this is a user.pem file. Syntax cache you can error for now, uh, I mean, ignore for now. And if I go inside uh, cd trusted search, if I do ll, it will show me show me the certificates which are supposed which are which have already been copied over here, right? So these are the CRT files, certificate files for the uh, servers. All right, as you can see, this is the opscore.com uh, uh, underscore com dot CRT. So this is the CRT file for the um, Chef server. So I need to come out here now and uh, I'll put this. If I do, uh, if I do a knife node list. This is the command which I have given. Uh, let's say it gives me uh, some machines. Or not. Okay, so I have two machines configured, right? Uh, GitLab server and uh, GitLab 2 and Git, Git server. I think uh, this is a uh, new test machine, now, right? Um, and as of now, if I do chef client, it is not going to. Recognize, right? It does not have anything. Uh, and I have only these two machines, right? Even if I go to my uh, GUI, it should show me only two machines, if I'm not wrong. Uh, it's actually not showing anything at all, which is uh, kind of strange. Yeah. Let me uh, check if it shows something in the policy. All the things correct. So these are the cookbooks which I have created so far. I can see under policy. As of now, I only have test code, no rules. Uh, I have um, database. Yes, I do have one database. So this, these are the things which we'll be covering in some time. So we'll see all those things. Uh, however, the strange part is that it is okay. Now it is coming. Probably it took some time to. So now, as you can see, I have GitLab tool and I have uh, Git server. So uh, let me just uh, repeat the process for you once again. You, what we did was we first created uh, an account on our hosted uh, Chef server. Uh, that was the first thing we did. 
uh, then we logged into the server and uh, we actually uh, we came over here administration and we copied the we, we downloaded the zip file the, the down starter kit for the machine uh, we kept it separately and then what we have done is uh, that we went to the workstation this is the workstation which i am working with yes and uh, i first installed let me show you if i have it I still have it uh, folder right now. yeah if you see here i have this uh, chef dk which i have downloaded right so what i did was i just downloaded this one and with the help of rpm command something like uh, rpm rpm hyphen ivh and then the chef this file so i just uh, ran this command chef dk got installed on my system once that was installed i copied that starter kit onto this machine uh, which is in my home folder so let me just show you that right i downloaded this chef starter.zip file over here and then i unzipped i got this chef repo folder inside which i have uh, my knife file and my pem file and all the cookbooks and everything right i come here chef repo and i have all those files over here right in fact even the dot chef folder which contains sniper rb and user dot pen so that part is done so now we need to uh so we have our uh, and we checked it once we install everything we with the help of knife note let me do this client list if i do it should give me uh, two of my nodes and one of the servers one of the sorry one of the uh, shared workstations which is a local one so this is my and if i give only knife node list this will give me only the node list not the uh, workstation so so far it is working fine as you can see i have uh, the nodes these two nodes now i have a third, another machine here, which uh, uh, if i do a host name give me new test, yes it is and uh, i have if i check i have this uh, IP address as well, which is uh, 35. So what I'm going to do now, I want this machine to be uh, uh, to for the chef server to report this machine to the chef server, which I have, right? So we call this process something called bootstrapping, okay? We need to bootstrap uh, the machine in order for the chef to administer this machine, right? So once again, we need to install the chef server or we need to have a hosted chef account. Either one of them is fine. Then we have to configure our chef workstation, uh, which we have done. We need to download the starter kit, which we have done and copy it onto the chef server. Now we are going to bootstrap the node, right? How we do that? We come to our workstation. Let's do this. Um, we come to our workstation. We do something like knife, boot, strap. Uh, then we give this uh, IP address. Fine. Then we do hyphen user and uh, uh, important point is this username. We give this username as vagrant. vagrant and we give the password also as vagrant because the ID and password both are vagrant in our case. This ID and the password is the one which is there on this machine. Okay, this machine which we are trying to boost. Huh? And we need the ID password of this particular machine in order to log in from the workstation. So I do that. I have now the ID and the password given. I give one command uh, because we need sudo access as well. So I give hyphen hyphen sudo. Uh, then I need to give a node name for this machine. Okay. So I'll give the node name as same as what. Uh, so I'll give this new machine. Okay. I think there is a name which is given over here. Let me just check. I'll keep the same as the host name. So host name is new test. So I'll do it as new test. So once again, let me show you the full command here. It is uh, knife boot strap um, fqdn then hyphen x username hyphen p password hyphen hyphen sudo because we want sudo access to be 
uh, for this uh, user ID because what will happen with during the bootstrap command actually it will be some uh, files will be copied and some files will be installed on that machine okay so we need the administrative privileges in order to do that and hyphen hyphen node uh, name and this name we can give anything in our case we have given node one uh, so in our case we have given new node right so this is the format and if i give the actual command over here this will be knife bootstrap uh, we don't have the experience we'll give the uh, IP address which is 35.172.28.28.35 then hyphen x uh, we have vagrant hyphen capital P we have password is again vagrant as you are aware hyphen hyphen sudo hyphen hyphen node hyphen name uh, we give this as new test that is the machine name which we have given right so I'll keep the same thing so let's run this now uh, and let's see what happens let me just maximize it I hope this is going to work. So, uh, if we don't, if we have, if we have not, uh, you know, then any error, then uh, this should be running and uh, it should boost up the node. And what is it? Has it been creating? Trying to connect to the server. Uh, oh, okay, okay. I think I've done a mistake. It's this one, right? I've given the hyphen X. So username is incorrect, so it'll not work anyways. Uh, what I need to do is let me just come out of it. Yeah, authentication failed, obviously. Uh, what I need to do is I need to correct this name by mistake. There's a typo here, so vagrant and vagrant. So this should work fine now. Now we'll see one interesting thing. Uh, since new client and node were already created with the name new test. Uh, it lasts for the We need to overwrite. Yes, we can. We want to overwrite uh, node and we want to overwrite the client as well. Yes, we want to overwrite the client. So, from now, this is going through with the. Uh, yes, so everything is fine. It is trying to. Uh, the authentication part is fine now. So, it has proceeded. Now, it is inside the machine, as you can see here. It is going the IP address of the machine. So just trying to download some files, right? Uh, this is basically the chef client. Uh, I'll show you which file is going to download. In this, uh, this Let's move on here. Let's go back. Um, development kit. This main page. Yeah, it is going to download uh, this particular file, chef client, right? And uh, based on the operating system which one we have, as you can see here. These many types of systems we can manage with the help of Chef, right? So, AIX, Cisco, and as you can see, router, which is the data. So, Debian, FreeBSD, Mac OS, Red Hat, Linux, Ubuntu, and Windows. So, these many uh, types of machine we can manage with the help of Chef, right? So, okay, it is going through, but it's uh, kind of slow at the moment, right? So, it's trying different mechanisms to download the package. Sherry? Yes, uh, the Vagrant machine will be, means the box will be, the box, sorry, in any environment, no? Either. Uh, sorry, sorry, after later, the, uh, at the end of the class, if I can get the whole video, it will be good because I can't hear you. It, it comes, I can hear noises, but the audio is not really clear today at all. Okay. At all. Is it for everyone or only for Karangu? Others, Nani and uh, Vasu, are you guys can hear me? Yeah, it is clear. Uh, so is yeah. I'm gonna do, I'll share the, the link with you. Any which is, I'll upload all the videos. Uh, if not by today, by tomorrow, surely. So before the class, you will have all the Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Uh, Eric, what I'm asking is the environment should be same uh, with the workstation, the other one. No, no, not really. You can have anything. Uh, oh, so we can have anything. Told you, right? Uh, in this screen, you can have these many types of uh, machines which you can bootstrap and which you can manage closely. Anything is fine. Only condition is that you need to have the um, ID and the password for that machine. 
a user ID should be existing on that machine. That's all you need, right? Um, it has shown some error. Let me just check if it is able to. Uh, because see, typically what happens, uh, this machine should be connected. Let me just check. If, um, This is something which we are trying to bootstrap, right? So, so looks like some internet issue over here. I mean, not internet, like there's some network issues. Let me see if I have any other machine work which I can. Well, maybe for some reason, it's actually not able to uh, ping, you know. Um, let me see if I can. Um, hmm. Let's reload this machine. Sorry, not reload. I'm going to come out of this, and we need to do a reload. And meanwhile, let's just. Uh, even here, it is not working. Okay, uh, <clears throat> we'll try uh, something else. Just we have the different boxes, right? Uh, let's see if we have. Okay, we have this test pattern machine. Should be working fine. So let me just create another location here. Hmm. Well, that's kind of strange. I mean, uh, even here, I can this thing. This one is holding up. Let's see, once it is up, we'll try that once again. Okay. Uh, so, what typically will happen is once you the, the bootstrapping part is done, it will actually come over here. You should be able to see that on your uh, console. So, over here, you should be able to see that just like this one. So, once that step is complete, I mean, there is no other thing which you need to do. Once you do, once you run this command, if the command is successful, uh, you will see that machine with this node name, whatever node name you have provided, over here onto your, uh, you know, uh, console. This will be the node name as you can see here. Whatever you have provided, these details will come up automatically. Okay, uh, the the FQD and the IP address and all these things. Uh, okay, I think that this one is. Uh, being done. So let's go over there again. Search and uh, let's do that machine once again. Uh, let's we'll try to bootstrap once again. Let's see what happens. Okay. So let, let's keep the name as different one. New test uh, one. Let's put it. Okay. Let's see. Hmm, it is actually Yeah, my internet looks fine. There's no issue with the internet. I need to troubleshoot it. What is it, what exactly has happened here? So
Okay, while that is running at the back side, uh, I mean, uh, at the background, I'll just show you. See what happens once you have uh, uh, the machine up and running, once it is uh, uh, being bootstrapped, it will show over here. So let's just check what do we have in get, inside Git server. If you click on Git server, it will actually show you uh, what the contents inside of this, right? Uh, it contains uh, all the attributes of your uh, machine. And you can see it over here. If you click on attributes and if you scroll down, you will have a number of things, you know, all these uh, options about network and counters and kernel and system. If I come over here, say let's say, let's expand this uh, counters thing. So we have uh, uh, the IP address, the MAC address, all these things are present. What kind of file system it has got? It gives you all the details about the file system, right? Uh, this we call it as OHI. We will cover this uh, in one of the later videos. What exactly this contains? But it has got all the information about your uh, node. All right, each and everything is uh, saved over it. And if you see here, the machine name is Git Server, the host name is Git Server, FQDM is also Git Server, whatever we have given. So for the ease of access and for the ease of understanding, uh, we have kept all the names the same. Uh, so that is what all it is showing over here. In your uh, actual, uh, you know, uh, lab, uh, sorry, actual production environment, these will be set, uh, different, right? Uh, FQDM will be different. FQDM and host name uh, might will not be the same most of the times, right? It'll be different. So that is one thing. And uh, once you have this machine, you have actually have the something called a run list, which you can edit. Okay, you can come over here. So we'll see that once we complete the recipes and cookbooks. But this is how you uh, go ahead and uh, you know edit your run list. You can actually whatever uh, cookbooks are available, they will be showing. You can actually drag and drop like this. All right. You can put as many recipes as you want in the run list. So what will happen next time when you, if you save this, and uh, next time when the chef client run happens on the server on that node, it will actually run all these recipes one by one. Okay. So whatever uh, things are there inside, it will make those changes take effect. So you change the SAP uh, run list from there. And whenever you have to make any changes to the server with the help of Chef, um, this time looks like it has, it was successful. Yes, looks like it was able to download um, the things and it has, uh, you know, Chef client has been installed also. So that's a good thing. Now we should be able to see a couple of things. It has, uh, if you see here, it has chef client finished zero of zero resources updated in 32 seconds. Actually, what happens uh, during the bootstrap process itself, you have an option to uh, run some recipes. We have not done that. Uh, we have just bootstrap our node, right? So now if we do, sorry, we are on the workstation, we do a knife node list. Let's see if it gives me the new node name. So earlier, it might be possible that it, there was some issue with the internet because of which um, uh, you know it was not able to upload. And uh, yes, as you can see, in your case of uh, it has got interrupted. Uh, it got interrupted in the beginning. New test one is correct uh, node name which we have bootstrapped just now. And if I come over here and if I refresh this screen, pressing F5, and now it should give me the details. All right, and without a problem, without a doubt, it is come. So this one we will delete because there is nothing inside this one. So we will do a delete node. This will be deleted. So we are okay with that. Yes. And new test one is the machine which we downloaded, I mean, which we uh, bootstrap. So now we uh, we have that machine over here. Uh, let's see, I'm coming up. Absolutely fine. It is a Ubuntu machine. Uh, it was five minutes is that time and. Last checked in is the one when you have the last chef client run completed. Okay, this is what it shows. So we have just completed the chef client, and it's showing this to me. Right? Uh, and if you come over here, so this was a test machine, right? Now, what I will do if I do a photo chef client, if I run this. Now 
right? As you can see here, this is the machine which I have just bootstrapped. So whenever you want to make some changes to the chef server, I mean, uh, uh, through chef to this node, you need to run this chef client. So the chef client basically you need to run every time uh, to every node. And that is irrespective of which machine you have. I have tried it on AIX, I have tried it on Linux uh, and Windows. Everywhere the command is same. Okay, so chef client is the command which you need to run. This is what I'm talking about, right? And uh, once again, since we don't have anything in the run list, if I come over here and if I, uh, yeah, new test one, if I check the run list, it is, uh, click on edit run list, it's currently empty, right? If you see here, there is no such thing over here. So if I put something from this side, Apache server or Apache test or anything, it will actually run those uh, commands onto the machine, right? So we'll see that. We'll see uh, once we cover. Uh, Cookbook and recipe. So this is how you uh, <clears throat> and uh, then it will start uh, talking to the chef server. So this is the way. Uh, this is how you put the table and same way you can then as many nodes you can do as many nodes as you want. All the nodes will be listed on your uh, uh, chef server. Um, you can actually create a script to do all these things. Manual tasks. You can actually create a batch script and run on the chef server. Basically, what you are doing is you are running just this command, right? This command which I just showed you. So you can keep on changing the, uh, you know, uh, you can create a batch file and uh, edit all these, you know, just add all those FQDNs and username and password. Sorry. Yes, I mean. One question, like uh, in the run list, if you want to edit the run list, mm -hmm. okay, will it automatically show the available recipes or do we need to create the available recipes? Uh, no, no. Once you create a recipe and cookbook, once you load it on the chef server, it will actually show automatically. Okay, we need to we need to load um, the recipes. Then only it will show. Yeah. Yes, I mean you are on the workstation. From on the workstation, yeah. whatever cookbooks. See, I have. Uh, uh, if I go inside my cookbooks folder and I do a uh, ll, I have all these right. Apache, Apache test, new user, um, starter and test. If I if I same thing, if I try to see on my GUI. I can come here, right? Policy. Uh, it will come up. Yeah. So Apache, Apache test, QS test. So if you see here, I have not uploaded probably this is starter and uh, one, two, three, four users. One, two, three, and four. So test and start new user and Apache, Apache says test I have. I don't have this starter recipe, right? So this recipe, I am not sure if I have something. Let, let's upload this one. So. Uh, how do you upload it? You just do a knife uh, cookbook upload starter. That's all you need to do. Okay. Uh, so I do this. As of now, as you can see, it's not showing over here. If it is not showing over here, it will not show in the run list also. Right? Even here, it will not come up. Right? If I click over here, if I click on edit run list. Uh, yeah, as of now. Uh, that is not there, right? So I cancel this and uh, let's come back. Let's see if it is uploaded. It is actually still uploading. So this is how you um, upload the recipe onto the. Okay, it is done already now. Now if I come on my uh, chef server, now if I do a refresh, I think I should be able to see the starter. And yes, so now you have this one. Start recipes there, whatever recipe you have, it is showing over here, right? So, and yeah, now if I come to the nodes section, and if I do, uh, let's say I want to edit the run list for this one, click on edit run list, it is showing over here now, right? So now I can actually upload and download, and you know, I mean, uh, uh, add it to the run list and remove from the run list. So this is how you need to do. The moment you upload a cookbook to the chef server, it will start showing over here. No, nothing else needs to be done. All right, guys. So this is how you. Um, what we have done today is we have completed the chef server configuration. Um, then we configured the workstation for our purpose, and we saw how to bootstrap a node. Right. So. If you guys want, I can actually cover uh, 
I can actually cover this um, how to create a recipe. Okay, please. Uh, this is already covered. Uh, maybe this we covered yesterday, covered yesterday. Right? So I can cover this one, but it will be a little complicated. If you guys want, I can do this today. Or you guys want to practice the bootstrapping part and I'll cover this tomorrow. What do you say? It's up to you guys. Um, we we do it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah our connection is very bad, Sherik. We can't hear anything. To be honest, today the classes I can't tell you what you've just been saying, telling us. But I will go over the video and learn more because I can't hear you. Yeah, right. I can hear the noise, the voice, but nothing is clear. And same mm. as Basu and my experience in here because it's because of our internet connection, not at your end, really. Oh, okay. Yeah, because if I have some issue, then nobody will be able to hear me. So yes, what I can, anyways I have shared, I mean, I have uh, recorded this video. So what I will do, I will upload this video today itself, uh, so that you can see and others when I get time. And uh, before tomorrow class, you will have that. So it's not complicated, just follow the steps what I have. Uh, I have already shared the document with you. And today I have showed you how to how this is done. And we'll continue with this, and uh, tomorrow we'll start. We'll start writing recipes and cookbooks. So, because we have the chef server, we have the chef workstation, uh, and we have the notes configured as well, right? So, you do all these things. These three things are important. Once you have this, we have the chef infrastructure. So, we'll tomorrow we'll write a couple of uh, small cookbooks and recipes. We'll see how we work with the uh, with the recipes, right? Uh, and how we upload and download cookbooks. How we manage all those things. So, we'll start from tomorrow onwards. Uh, what is the yeah, okay. All right. So in that case, yes, we, we can wind up today, guys. Uh, I'll share the, this uh, slide with you. I mean, okay, there is no slide today. Um, so whatever documents I have shared, those are already enough for you. And uh, make sure you are able to see what, what we have done today. Make sure you are able to replicate that in your uh, machines. Uh, right. And I'll make sure I'll upload this video today for you guys. And I'll share the link with all of you. Cheers. Thank you.